This artwork is all done in layers using a lot of different products. The glow-in-the-dark powder, I have a background made out of a 3D Crete, and we are going to have fun. Let's get going. This is a batch of 3D Crete from Counter Culture. This is mixed up to be used as a um, texture layer. And it's starting to set up in the container, so I better get working with it quick. You can see it's got some crumbles there. But uh, here in the container, it's still pretty soft. So I'm just going to... This is an encaustic board. And uh, I haven't done any finishing to it, but encaustic boards are great boards in my book. So I'm just going to put some of this down. And uh, we're going to texture on top of here and figure out what we're going to do with it. All right. Bam. Let me get a knife. So I really didn't have too much of a idea on how I wanted to get this to lay down on the board. So I'm just going to use my palette knife and play around with it a little bit. Try to get an understanding of how it's going to move on this encaustic board. Uh, these encaustic boards by Ampersand really hold up well to whatever you put on them. So now I'm just using my glove, spreading that around. Wore a hole into the glove. Great. So then I decide, yeah, well, let's put some wax paper on there and kind of even it out with that. And that's fine. And I pull off the wax paper. I'm not too disappointed with how that looks. But uh, yeah, I'm just going to fiddle with it a little bit more. It's the next day and everything's dry. I'm going to use this quick coat from Counterculture. It's a urethane coating. You can see I also made some craters into my surface. It just, you know, started looking like a moon surface to me. I got a sponge tipped a uh, foam brush there and I'm just going to apply a liberal coating of the urethane and that's going to seal the surface of the concrete. The concrete is porous and if I'm going to be using resin on top of this I really need to seal that down. So using this urethane coating the quick coat will do that for me. All right, I brought the board over to my big art table and um, you can see that the urethane, sorry about that, there you go, now you get a good look at it. It's got a shiny finish on here, and that's okay. It's urethane. It's what urethane does, unless you're buying one that specifically says it's, uh, you know, matte finish or a semi-gloss or whatever. But anyhow, it's it's shiny. And... Um, but my sides are still raw. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to spray paint the whole bloody thing. Okay. All right, I have my board prepared. So we did the 3D Crete on here, and that's what gave it its texture. So that was all set and dry. And then what I did was I had taped off the sides. I spray painted the entire surface white with Rust-Oleum spray paint. And it was just, you know, I don't know. I wanted to try something different. So I got out a can of metallic silver, again from Rust-Oleum, and spray painted. I taped off the sides so that they would be white and then I sprayed the surface of metallic silver. So it has a reflective finish to it. And when I was using the 3D Crete, I decided that, yeah, I wanted to add a little bit in here. So I wanted it to have kind of a look of a moonscape. And I went with that and um, bought some of this art and glow it is a 3d or a um, night glow powder and their recommendation is seven grams in one ounce of resin 
So I'm going to cover the entire surface with a batch of resin. I have measured out, I'm going to do four ounces of resin. Might be a little bit much, but I have 28 grams of the Night Glow powder in here. And this is their greenish glow. I've used it in another piece. And let me tell you something, guys. This stuff glows like you can't believe. Incredible. I have it in a uh, small hallway upstairs, my other piece. And when I go to bed at night, it just stares right back at me. And it's amazing how much it glows. So it really does work. It's really incredible. I recommend the stuff highly. I will put a link in the description box for it if you want to give it a try. But it's a lot of fun. So let me get mixing. I'm going to batch up my resin. I'm using um, the general use epoxy resin from the epoxy resin store. It is a really nice crystal clear resin. So let me get four ounces of that batched up. I'm going to add the powder. I'll let you guys watch that so that you can see how well it blends in. Okay. Here's my four ounces of resin. It's got quite a bit of bubbles in there, but that's okay. So you can see I also have a tape down, uh, tape dam, I should say, that I created around the edge. And again, I'm gonna cover the entire surface and I'm gonna let it go right up to those edges. And then once it's starting to set up and it has gotten to a thicker consistency, then I'll take that side off and let it round over on the edge. So here's my resin. It's got a lot of bubbles in it. I've mixed it combined part A and B equal parts. This is a one-to-one -one ratio resin and it's very thin type of resin. It has a about an hour for me. I can work with this resin for about an hour, sometimes a little bit longer, and that's ready to go. So I'm not concerned about the bubbles because I'm going to be getting the bubbles out as I'm working. So let's combine this. Let's see if I can let's move this off camera. There we go. So again, four ounces of resin, 28 grams of the Art and Glow Glow in the Dark powder. So I'm gradually going to add this. I don't want to add it all in one big blob. And it combines very nicely into the resin. You don't have to worry about um, clumping with it. It breaks down really well. The one thing I did notice with this is that it does settle because the powder is um, has quite a bit of weight to it. I don't know what the chemical makeup is of it, but it's got quite a bit of weight. So the powders will settle. So that's that bit in there. Add a little bit more. So again, I'm just adding it gradually. Okay, I've got it all combined in there now. Looks great. Again, a lot of bubbles, but I'm okay with that. It's not going to be a problem when working this piece. And I can hear, you know, it's almost as if I poured sand in there. It's got like a gritty sound to it. So I'm guessing that, you know, that has something to do with whatever it is that they're using to make this. So here it is in the cup and I'm going to turn out the lights and see if we can get a peek of what it looks like. Check it out. Look at that. Is that not cool? How much fun is that? Now, I did not give it a lot of time to charge, but there it is. All right, lights back on.
Okay, I'm going to get this set here for you guys, and I'm going to put on my mask, and we're going to cover that piece. All right, so let's get this poured out here. Now, again, the silver background, my thought was that it would reflect some light back out. The first time that I tried using the glow-in-the-dark powder, I found it to be a little bit on the translucent side, so hopefully the silver in the background will add to the reflection through there. So we shall see. And again, this resin is on the thin side, so it spreads really nicely, and I can see some of the details in the uh, 3D Crete. Pull it off that tape edge and letting it roll over the sides there across my taped off edges. And we're going to let it be for overnight. I've decided that I need a little bit more detail across the surface of the first layer of cured resin. So I have the spray paint, the metallic silver, and I'm using a paper towel and just dabbing a little bit of detail across that surface. The silver is all dry now. And I'm going to be applying, this is contact, uh, shelving contact paper. So it's adhesive, and I've applied that across the surface. Now I'm going to use this bowl to create a round, because remember, I'm going for a moon look to it. And I'm using my X-Acto knife to cut along the lines that I've drawn. And then I'll just remove those corners and expose the corners of the first layer of resin. And I'll be keeping that blind on there. I'm gonna be heading outside with some spray paint. And again, this round is supposed to represent the moon. I have my spray paint and I'm going outside. And here's the result. Okay, I did a little bit more spray paint work, so I've got my cans of Rust-Oleum here. I first had done a hit on the corners with the navy blue. And I got a little concerned that it was just going to be too, you know, black and white kind of thing. So, you know me. I think you know me. I've got a lot of spray paint, so I went back and pulled another can. I've got the wildflower blue. So what I did was I did some real light hits, trying to focus right on that edge of the blind that I applied to the surface. And, you know, and then I came back again with the navy blue and hit it again at the far corner so that I kind of got a fade. So, now I'm going to let it dry, um, and once it's dry, I'll remove that blind and we'll see how it looks. But uh, I'm liking what I've got so far, so hopefully I'll like it when I remove the blind. We shall see. Right, so it's been 24 hours since I sprayed, and everything is dry. So, let's get this nasty cardboard out of here, and let's get this blind off of here. That phase is done. Looks good. Nice sharp lines. I've got a nice little bit of a fade. I'm happy with that. And let's get ready for doing another layer. So I'm leaving the resin drips on there and just putting a new tape dam on, going all the way around. And now I'm at my resin table and I've made sure that the piece is level. And we're just going to batch up again another four ounces because I found out that's my magic number for getting a coat of resin across the whole surface. And again, it's very fluid-like, so I can tilt the canvas and get it to move to all the corners easily. And we'll pop those bubbles out. Removing the bubbles with a torch, I have to stay away from the tape dam. Um, you can actually set that on fire. So I'll use the heat gun when I need to get close in. 
Now I'm adding just some few touches of some of the resin that I pigmented with a, um, this is the Flow Art from the Epoxy Resin Store. It's their white and it's a really nice bright white and I'm just adding a little bit of what I'm going to be using as the wispy lines of clouds. And by doing it in layers, this creates another layer where there'll actually be shadows through the pigment across the surface of the resin. And pop those bubbles real quick and cover it. And then I'll come back here and we're going to remove that tape dam. So I want to do this one carefully because if I pull all the way around in a circle, then I potentially could have my clouds drifting in directions that I don't want them to. So I'm going to remove the sides to allow the resin to flow in that direction first. So it'll flow off towards me there and then the opposite side. Those are going to be the directions that I want it to flow. All right, and then I can come back and remove the two other sides. Now this is being done after letting the uh, surface sit for about an hour. All right, and I'm going to make sure that the bubbles are popped out of there and I need that edge to roll over. Now again, it's got some build up here, so it's it's getting to be a little bit more challenging to have a nice rollover edge. Okay, layer number two is cured and we're going to remove the tape edge and expose those white sides. Now again, this has the two layers of resin on it so far and I've done the rollover edge on both of those. So it's built up on the tape and if you don't remove the tape early on, it becomes a problem. So I want to get that off of there. I'm able to set my heat gun on the tabletop and just wave it across to warm it. So now that the tape is off, I get a good look at the sides again, and I'm just not happy with that edge. So I'm going to go outside and sand it down, smooth out those edges, and then do a little more spray paint. So surprise, I used black. Why not? It's my prerogative switched over to black. This is a really nice gloss black and I also did a blind across the surface and if you see in the pattern on the blind you can see I have left like a, hor a horizon line there at the bottom. So let's remove that tape um, blind. Again it's done with the contact paper and I tape the edges right up to the side there. Now you get a good look at the horizon and I'm going to do some brush work too. Now once I had that horizon, I decided I was going to be going with some silhouettes of evergreen. So that's what I did the brush work for. The paint has cured overnight and now I'm adding another layer, again four ounces of the Epoxy Resin Store's general use epoxy and I let it sit in the cup to get a little bit on the thicker side because I want this layer to be really deep and letting it sit in the cup it gets thicker. I'm going to pop the bubbles with the heat gun here just like that and then we'll after letting it sit for where an hour I remove the tape dam. It's getting real stringy and then Using the heat gun, I'm going to roll over those edges. And again, it's a really thick layer. And because it sat for an hour, it got a really nice thick consistency. So it's giving a really good domed effect to it. And watch on this side when you're down here at the bottom. There it goes. And you can see how that edge just rolls nicely. Next morning and everything's cured and I'm ready to get that tape off the side. So at warp speed, we're just going to use the heat gun, warm the edge and pull that tape off. And then we're going to head outside and get some pictures. 
check it out. Here's the finished piece. A total layers of three layers of resin building on top. These silhouettes actually cast shadows across the background and I'm really thrilled with the Art and Glow. The powder in the resin gives a really great shine. Check out how it looks. Hope you enjoyed it and check out these other videos and please don't forget to subscribe to Moon Cusser Art.